Okay, so hi there folks. In this video, we're going to learn um, how to do the introduction to variability or the measures of variation. And then we're going to use to uh, compute that using Microsoft Excel. Now, um, this is our next video right after the measures of central tendency. Here, we're going to have this variation or variability. In some books, they call it the measures of dispersion. So uh, first, let's have some activity. Again, this handout is taken from Dr. Sweet Rose Dunaris. So the, consider the following two sets. Uh, we have the male and female of, no, of number of bottles of soft drinks consumed in a week. Um, I mean, the two sets of female and male, okay, those who have consumed this number of soft drinks in a week. So let's say A is the males, B is the females, for example. So I have plotted them already here in our Excel, um, in this blank book in Excel. Um, what we're going to do is to fill in this table needed for this information. So let's just make it in this manner. So we have first, we need to fill in the N. We need to fill in the X bar, that's the mean, and we have to fill in the x tilde that's the medium so what we're going to do is we're going to use excel now um well we can count these um since the number is just a little but imagine if your n is many so it's maybe it's more than 30 or more than 40 so um we don't know uh, counting them is going to be a tasky job to do so let's make use of excel that's what i'm going to do is type in equals count open parenthesis um, highlight the th the data which you want to count, and this count function will actually do what this count function will do is to count how many data are there. So let's hit enter. That's nine. Um, I think of course that will be similar to number letter B. So the second set which is also nine. Um, again what I did there, if you miss that, um, click on the the cell where you want to copy. What we'll do is to copy the formula going to the B so that we we will also count the number of of data in B. So we'll just, um, actually we can do copy and paste, paste it here. We can do that. Or the simplest way to do that is just to click on the cell. Um, on the bottom right of that cell, we have this small square. Put your cursor in such a way that it will become a black um, crosshair and then uh, drag it over there wherever you want to copy the formula with. Okay, if I'm going to drag it um, all the way here, it becomes zeros because it has nothing to count to. So let's just delete it. Now, for the mean, uh, we're asked to mean, the mean, that is the X bar. So again, how do we get the mean in Excel? We type in equals average, open parenthesis, highlight the, the, the data where you want to get the average or the mean of, close parenthesis, and then voila, we have that there, eight. And then let's drag this again. And we have also the mean in the letter B is also eight. Okay, next, we'll, we need the median. So that's the X tilde over here. So what we're going to type in is equals median as it is open parenthesis highlight the data where you want to get the median from close parenthesis and then hit enter what you have is eight if we're going to extend this we have, what we have here also is eight now notice that our values for the n um well let's the n is not of much important but importance but we can see in the mean and the median the means are equal bo for both a and b okay notice the means are equal okay so that's how we describe the data and also the medians are equal okay, take note the medians are equal and the meets are equal though the scores are not the same okay the scores are not the same but the mean and the means and medians are are equal so that is you'll have this so we have nine eight bottles and eight bottles for everything mean and median so the two measures do not this uh, do not describe how the observations spread out from the average. So we know the average. The average is eight, clearly enough. But we don't know how much uh, spread it had. It is how much variated are the scores. So if we're going to, to consider a dot plot for that, so what we'll have is this. So this dot plot shows that the points in B, which is on above the number line, are closely clustered above about the center. So our center is eight, so it's closely clustered here. While in eight, it's it's much scattered. Okay. Here's the center, our eight, but it's much scattered. So therefore, um, there is a need for us to measure the and differentiate between the distributions in terms of how dispersed they are. And that's going to be our measures of variation. Okay, so there's a lot of measures of variation. We're going to focus on uh we're going to focus on three, but we're going to take um, much importance in the standard deviation. Okay. So let's talk about the, 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 the range first. Again, these measures are the measures of dispersion or variability, measures of variation. They describe the degree of dispersion, okay, or scatter of the data points. So the mean is simply the 
the simplest measure of variation it only computes or it it the the mean can be can be obtained by just you know um getting the difference between the highest and the lowest value okay so that's that's uh that's the mean that's the range rather um it's not very useful though because it can it, it only considers the extremes and not the the ones in between and also the, does not consider the bulk of the observations of that where there are some books in between so we use this when data are too scant or too scattered to justify the computation of a more precise measure of variability or a knowledge of extreme scores or a total spread is all that is what the researcher wanted so um for here in a so actually in excel we don't we do not have a direct um value for the or to get the range so for example if we want to get the range um you will need to put uh let's try if there is a range function so there is no range function okay there's nothing here that can tell us the range but what we can do is actually let's redo this let's i'll get first the maximum value maximum let's just name it maximum and then we'll also get the minimum here and then after that we're going to deduct the maximum from the min uh, rather the maximum by the minimum and then get the range so what's the minimum the maximum value what's the highest value in this in this distribution here in a so clearly enough since the the values are in an array already so um you know it's it's going to be 15 but let's just try so the 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 formula for the excel the function for the excel to get the maximum value is equals max x open parenthesis highlight the data set where you want to get the maximum value um, hit it with equals and then what you have is 15 clearly enough since it's an array it's it must be 15 and the minimum is going to be min open parenthesis highlight the data values that you want to get the minimum of close parenthesis equals and then drag it and then we can see of course um, that the lowest value is three so to get the range it's going to be equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value that's going to be 12 and that's going to be 12 also here so that's how we get the mean okay so um they both have 12. okay they both have 12. so this example shows an instance wherein the range values are not able to differentiate between a set a and set b though we know that the the, that the spread of the data set data points are are not, not not the same but they do not the range does not give that um explanation so there's a need to have a measure that will be able to truly distinguish um between the the spread of these two sets so that is going to be the standard deviation that will be our answer okay it's the most important and the most commonly used measure of variation together with the mean as a measure of central tendency that's why in in the normal curve and we'll have our lesson in the normal curve the mean and the standard deviations are the ones um grouped together to get the the values of a, of a normal distribution so how do we get the standard deviation so um we have here some definition a deviation is x sub i minus the mean okay and the standard deviation in u is, is used rather when the statistics having the greatest stability, stability is desired and when the mean is the preferred measure of central tendency so when we're using the mean that's that's when we're going to make use um usually with the standard deviation so what we can see here are the formulas for the standard deviation, standard deviation for the population for the sample again we make use of greek letters okay when we have the population and when you gather the population the sigma here this is sigma so since it's squared so that's sigma squared and we have the mu here as our mean here in the sample standard deviation what we have is the s that's our standard deviation s squared okay if since it's squared and then what we have here is the x bar for the mean and then we have here the raw score formula uh, it's even quite longer um than it should be um but uh in excel i'm going to show you how to do this with with just a, with just some clicks you can also do or compute that using a calculator if you want um i think i'm going to need another video for that so how do we get the the, the standard deviation so simply enough in excel excel um makes life makes our life easier so uh let's actually the the common name for the standard deviation is 
is SD. Okay, so every time I say SD here, it's going to be the standard deviation. Okay, so how do we get that? Equals um, STD dev, or rather ST dev, okay, ST dev, standard deviation. And actually in Excel, we can choose, is it a population standard deviation or a sample standard deviation? So in this example, let's just use the sample standard deviation. Oops, sorry. Dot S. And then we're go we need to highlight the values that we want to get the standard deviation of. Um, close parenthesis, and then you to have is 3.94. Let's drag this going here, and you can see that the standard deviation is now um, different from the standard deviation of A versus the B. So we can see here that the standard deviation for A is 3.94, which is bigger than the standard deviation for the B, which is 3.12. That is, which means the higher standard deviation, the more spread it is. Okay, so you can see that that the that um group A is more spread than group B because it, group B has a low standard deviation and that can be um, verified by the graph. So you can see um, group A here between, or rather um, down below the number line, it's, just more, it's, it's more scattered compared to group B because group B is lumped here in 789. Though there are some um, data outside it, but it, they're lumped. That's why they're, it's SD is low. Okay, that's why it says this low. Um, let's have another example. So how do we get the SD manually? Okay, in manual computation. So this, these are the steps. Uh, I won't be explaining it here since we're not going to use the manual computation anyways. So uh, here, here, here's the answer for our for this example. So we can see that the standard deviation is 3.9, which is pretty much equal. Uh, correct and our standard, that's for the a for the set b it's 3.1 so which is pretty much also correct okay so it should be bottles not books anyways so that's our example there let's have this as an example and we should arrive at the sd of 12.3 so let's try okay so let's call this uh let's call this x okay and uh put that in in, in the center bold it and then I'll input these points. Okay, so we have um, ten. Uh, those who those who get the, who got the quiz. So let's put it um, 30, 32, 71, 64, 50, 48, 63, 38, 41, 47, 52. And then we'll have ten of them. Um, I think we can count them as ten. Okay, that's ten of them. Okay, actually Excel has some. Um, some automatic um, solve uh, summations. If you're going to highlight the data and you're going to look at here below in this tab here, you can get the average already. That's the mean. You can get the number of them and you can get the sum. So I can verify, sorry, I can verify that there are 10 uh, values here, which corresponds to my n, 10 here. So I'm just I'm just particular at the SD. I want to get the SD. So I'm going to use equals um, stdev.s. This is a sample. Let's highlight this. Close parenthesis. Oops, sorry. Open parenthesis rather. Um, messed up my data. Okay. Let's do this again. S, and then highlight these. Close parenthesis, and then enter. So we have twelve point three three, which is more accurate than two twelve point three. So this is just rounded off to the nearest tenth. So the answer is the same. The answer. Is the same. So that's how you get the the standard deviation. So again, if you want the population standard deviation, so you, you may want to check on stdev dev um, dot p if you want the population. So if we're going to get the population, actually the answer will be quite different. Okay, so it's three point seven one. Let's and then here in our set B, the variance is also different. Uh, or rather, sorry, the population standard deviation is quite different because the formula is different itself. So here in the population standard deviation, we have the big N as our um, denominator. Here in the sample standard deviation, what we have is N minus one. Okay, we call that the Bessel's correction, and which we're going to discuss in the in in the future. But uh, know for now that we have the standard deviation and the population of different um, different formula. 
Okay, so that's why the answers are different. Okay, so um, knowing it should be important again, as I have always emphasized, it is important to know um, what your study is. Is it a population study? Is it a sample study? Okay, so let's delete, let's delete this. Now, um, we're done with these examples. Okay, and then we'll have the variance, which is pretty much um, short. Uh, these are some YouTube videos on the handouts themselves. But of course, you're going to stick with my videos, right? So let's go to the variance. So the variance is just the square of standard deviation. So we have here the formulas. Um, population variance, sample variance, that's S squared. We have sigma squared. So this is actually of little importance because it's calculated based on and expressed with square units of measure. So uh, let's just um, try the variance here in Excel anyways. It's easy get that variance sorry variance yes okay how do we get that um just like in standard deviation what we're going to do is click on equals var and again you need to choose its population or, or sample so uh, i'm going to use sample since i started with a sample here and then i'm going to highlight these values and then hit uh close parenthesis and enter so 15.5 and also for the variance here, equals var dot s. I let the data set, and then what you'll have is the variance, which is equal to 9.75. Let's um, let's try here. So actually here, we have the variance here. So the, the, the variance of A is actually 15.5. We can see it here, which is correct. And the variance for B is 9.75, which you can see here. Which is correct okay um you may want also to get the variance of this the variance should be 152.05 let's get that um equals variance dot s okay Add it the data set close parenthesis the answer is 152.04 let's see yes that's it 152.04 let's just make the decimals smaller it's here here in numbers and then click this uh, uh, decreased decimal. So yeah, that's it. That's our answer for the variances. And yeah, that's it for this video. Um, the next next up, we're going to discuss about the applications of the standard deviation. But for now, at at least it's good that you that you now know how to find the measures of vari variation or variability using Excel. Um, yeah. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you would like and also subscribe to my channel. So thank you.